Hey there, River Rica here, reporting for duty on a trigger. Thank you so much for shuffling states of emergency into adoption spirit with me and staring clear of danger. Heartily, we are grateful. In this session, we are seeing what the Venus, planet Venus in Pisces, sextiling Uranus in Taurus at 15 degrees has to say to us. But before that, some disclaimers. I am not a doctor, lawyer, therapist. I am a fortune teller. And what I offer is no substitute for their services. Furthermore, what I share does not determine your future. Only your intentions and your actions do. So please use your gift of discernment before deciding what to gather and take away. And of course, take only what resonates and blow like a kiss the rest to the universe for cosmic composting back into beauty. And again, don't take my word for it, for that would be tyranny, right? Thank you for using your gift of discernment. Heartily, we are grateful. And let me introduce my helpers. I have lit candles for Source, Mother Earth, Father Sky, the homeless, those that kick them out of their homes, the neighbors, the passers-by, even those working against our spiritual progression. Also, I have lit candles for harmony, unity, and balance for Archangel Gabriel and Archangel Azrael, the Archangels of Monday and Tuesday, for our ancestors here in the highest love and light, and for those who have crossed over to Father Sky by suicide and the family and friends they left behind, as well as the war-torn families, nations, and galaxies. And we thank Source for helping us all adopt success, transmuting those violent cycles into love. Heartily, we are grateful. And we also have some buttons, a bowl of buttons. I was called to share with us today and help us in this reading. And my mini crystal ball, a jar of garnets. We have my wooden dice, my wooden dagger wand, my other wooden wand. Maybe you've heard me mention how wood buoys your spirits. And so I really adore having those around and wands have powers all their own. You can research more about that on your own. And the dagger, the sword, it also helps cut through to the heart of the matter. This one, without hurting a soul. And represents the intellect. So that will help us, shall help us, may help us in this session. And then we have uh, the Tibetan bell kit, and we have six decks of cards, deck one, deck two, deck three, four, five, and six. And the first deck of cards is the Paragrams by Paramahansa Yogananda, and we have, I believe this is blue calcite, but please correct me if I am mistaken in the comments. Leave a comment below in the comments wherever those comment sections are for you. And this is wonderful for helping us speak our truth, among other things. And Paramahansa Yogananda began the Self-Realization Fellowship. You can check them out online. And perhaps you've read the autobiography of a yogi. You might be able to find that for free. And here is the Tree Angel Oracle. The Ancient Path into the Sacred Grove by Fred Hagenider and An Hang. That's deck no number two. And this was illustrated by ha An Hang. And we have some purple onyx. For that. To accompany that deck of cards. And then pile number three. Deck number three is the Cosmic Dancer Tarot by Sedona Soulfire and Tess Whitehurst. 
and I'll leave information for all of these decks in the description. You can find these also at the bottom of my homepage on YouTube. I've shared links for most of them. You know, the ones that are available on the YouTube. So you can connect with them on your own. And this is Amethyst, did I mention? So wonderful for healing. This purple onyx is wonderful for protection, among other things. Of course, quadruple check all of these items on your own to see what resonates with you because we are all different psychosocial science experiments and what resonates for you may not resonate for me and vice versa. So you want to check out on your own and help flex your intuition. Which is reminding me that this reading is for fun and games and for shits and giggles and for entertainment and for flexing your heart, mind, soul, spirit, and intuition. And at the least, I hope to cause harm to none. And at the most, maybe I can assist you in your healing path, help guide you on your healing path. And this is Aventuring. Helps you get to where you want to go, speaking of. And that was on the Cali Oracle by Alana Fairchild and illustrated by Jimmy Manton. And then we have the Sacred Geometry Activation Deck by Lawn. That's pile number five, deck number five, and on that we have a rose quartz. Wonderful for unconditional love. And then the last deck is the Living Altar, an oracle and spell deck for the Radical Witch by Kiki Robinson and Il Vadroma Marzana Radzesuski. It's one of the only Roma decks in circulation, so I'm thrilled to have that. I'm thrilled to have all of these decks. So grateful. And this is beautiful Moss Agate. Wonderful stone for healers. Aren't we all healers? Kind of like we're all folk artists, and we're all teachers, and we're all psychics, and we're all mediums. Just only some of us choose to study and practice for life worth living because free will's a thing, right? So before I begin, I would want to sage with you, and so I invite you to hold love in your heart, so only love is what we shall see, and I took some time to clear your space and meditate on your cards before we begin, but I surely appreciate you helping me clear the space. Streaming in grace to replace anything that needs to leave. Only those here for the highest love and light, please thank you heartily. We are grateful. Thank you so much, heartily. We are grateful. And we 
have the Tibetan bell and we are going to say a bell mantra from Thich Nhat Hanh. So if you're wearing headphones, please make the adjustment so your ears remain safe. And here we go. Mind, body, speech, and perfect oneness. I send my heart along with the sound of the bell. My hair is awakened from forgetfulness and transcend all anxiety and sorrow. Om. Peace. Shanti. Thank you. Excellent. So let us roll the dice and see what Venus in Pisces, sextiling Uranus in Taurus at 15 degrees has to tell us. And we thank Source and our spirit teams for guiding this reading in the highest love and light about how to move forward, minding our business in the highest love and light. And we thank Venus in Pisces and Uranus in Taurus. And I invite you to look up more about them on your own. Perhaps you tap into Molly McCord's weekly podcasts. She's so informative and easy to understand. And of course, there are so many. So please choose what resonates for you if that's something you want to do. Here we go. Six. Excellent. So that number six is wonderful for... It's a number for service, and it helps us differentiate between light and dark and the choices that we make between those two. And it also helps protect us for those times when people are so grief struck by loss and trauma that they lash out violently in fight, flight, freeze, F-U-C-K, fawn, all the different ways that people lash out. And so the number six helps protect us against those times, those, whether it's physically, physical violence or psychic attacks, the six helps protect us against that. And it helps us maintain our integrity by maintaining our boundaries. So we know when we need to steer clear, right? Danger steer clear. And... It's nothing personal. We just know if we are not equipped to help. And, you know, each time I look evil in the eyes, I see hurt in disguise calling for the salves of unarmed truths and unconditional love. Not always my turn to serve, right? It's not always my turn to serve. So maintaining boundaries is about that. We know when it's not our turn to serve and when we need to step away or steer clear instead of offering our help. Um, perhaps we're not equipped to help. Um, and that's a constantly evolving thing day to day. The jellyfish light over there in the corner that I forgot to introduce is reminding me that. And you may also choose to look up metaphysical properties of the jellyfish to understand more about what that medicine gives to you, what that magic gives to you. And here's that moss agate that was on top of the living altar deck. And let's see what the living altar has to share with us about what Venus in Pisces, sextiling Uranus and Taurus at 15 degrees has to tell us. And we thank your source and spirit team and angels and galaxy guides and ancestors and saints and sages, gods and goddesses and universes here in the highest love and light, as well as mine. You are a whole, full, powerful, loving, spiritual being. And so am I. And we thank your source, <clears throat> pardon me, and my source immediately shifting situations into what they need to be, offering necessary insights, healings, acts of grace, protection, heartily we are grateful. So it was. Thank you. Thank you for getting this reading in the highest love and light. What does 
<coughs> pardon me, <coughs> pardon me. What does Venus have to tell us about what's happening right now with her and Pisces, sextiling Uranus and Taurus? Cut the deck, cut the deck. So I shall cut the deck. Thank you. And on the bottom we have surrender. <coughs> Pardon me. What a beautiful card. Surrender. Such a big piece of our healing path is surrendering to what we have no control over and giving it up to the universe because that infinite intelligence works miracles beyond belief. We don't have to figure everything out. And that's part of the beauty, being able to surrender. It's such an art and a craft and a study and a practice and a science that's surrendering. And then we all on the top have creativity. Super sweet. So let me get the holder so I can read that and you can see it. Thank you for being patient with me as I put that together. All right. Creativity. Now there's three pieces to this. So Prepare yourself, settle in, nestle in. You shall hear about the Witch's Wheel correspondence. And then the spell and then the guiding messages that accompany. And the Witch's Wheel correspondence with the Creativity card is Spring, East, Air, Rebirth, childhood, emergence, promise, sunrise, crescent moon, and the first quarter moon. So those are bits and pieces that you may dive deeper into. Perhaps you journal about them, or perhaps you create your own witch's wheel and start with those pieces. Let your intuition be your guide. And the spell. I enjoy reading four times. So here we go. I choose to express and put into right action my inspirations. I honor my inspiration by conceiving ways to enact it upon the world. How can I justify my resistance to my growth? What I choose to transform also transforms me. Like the caterpillar, the holiest of fools, I devour my flesh and dissolve into the great expanse of unknown potential. I trust in the magic of my creativity to resurrect my truest form. I release my need to control the narratives. I will not longer force myself into the roles and expectations others have of me. I harness the fuel of tension harvested from my inner fire. I step boldly into the discovery of new worlds unlocked through my metamorphosis. Second reading. I choose to express and put into right action my inspirations. I honor my inspiration by conceiving ways to enact it upon the world. How can I justify my resistance to my growth? What I choose to transform also transforms me. Like the caterpillar, the holiest of fools, I devour my flesh and dissolve into the great expanse of unknown potential. I trust in the magic of my creativity to resurrect my truest form. I release my need to control the narratives. I will not longer force myself into the roles and expectations others have of me. 
I harness the fuel of tension harvested from my inner fire. I step boldly into the discovery of new worlds unlocked through my metamorphosis. Reading three. I choose to express and put into right action my inspirations. I honor my inspiration by conceiving ways to enact it upon the world. How can I justify my resistance to my growth? What I choose to transform also transforms me. Like the caterpillar, the holiest of fools, I devour my flesh and dissolve into the great expanse of unknown potential. I trust in the magic of my creativity to resurrect my truest form. I release my need to control the narratives. I will not longer force myself into the roles and expectations others have of me. I harness the fuel of tension harvested from my inner fire. I step boldly into the discovery of new worlds unlocked through my metamorphosis. And the fourth reading. I choose to express and put into right action my inspirations. I honor my inspiration by conceiving ways to enact it upon the world. How can I justify my resistance to my growth? What I choose to transform also transforms me. Like the caterpillar, the holiest of fools, I devour my flesh and dissolve into the great expanse of unknown potential. I trust in the magic of my creativity to resurrect my truest form. I release my need to control the narratives. I will not longer force myself into the roles and expectations others have of me. I harness the fuel of tension harvested from my inner fire. I step boldly into the discovery of new worlds unlocked through my metamorphosis. Wow, that's intense. The caterpillar devouring its flesh and dissolving into the great expanse of unknown potential. And we do that too. And this reading, of course, reminded me of orphans and adoptees, all those orphans and adoptees who have stepped out of the fog they are no longer under the impression that adoption is for the best or their relinquishment was for the best. And they're dismantling those orphan and adoptee fairy tales and they are rebuilding a new earth. And they are no longer forcing themselves into roles and expectations others have of them. Like so often adoption is more about the parents involved, uh, prescription for their loss and trauma more than helping the orphan or the adoptee. And so many orphans and adoptees are no longer forcing themselves into that role of being the healing dog, the healing, the seeing eye dog for the parents. And not to disrespect the parents, but to renegotiate a more equitable and fair social contract. And that is so hearty. Thank you so much for leading the way in love and light. Heartily, we are grateful. That is such tremendous work. The guiding messages for this creativity and what Venus in Pisces sextiling Uranus and Taurus at 15 degrees has to tell us. And you may journal about this. Two questions. What does the fire of air hold for you at this time? Bring this situation to the altar of creativity. What wisdom is alchemizing within you? Things that make you go, hmm. That is so beautiful. And that card is super sweet. You can see the thread work on it. I came across an artist, Christine, at Romany Art underscore NZ, I do believe, and one of her art pictures had a quote, a Romani pro a proverb that wherever the thread goes, the needle follows. And so that's coming to my mind as I look at this card 
and see the thread woven through and that triangle of transformation and the fire of transformation. I see the moon up there and the clouds, all these shape shifters, and we do that too. And so we can have fun with that. This is helping us have fun with that, these challenging times where we're healing our loss and trauma and adopting the life we want to live, the life we need to live, the life we desire to live. And so the surrender card is a little more about what Venus has to tell us. Venus and Pisces sextiling Uranus and Taurus at 15 degrees. So let's see what surrender has to say. Thank you so much, creativity. How do you choose to create? Feel free to leave in the comments. Are you a musician? Do you use needle and thread? Do you paint? Do you sing? Do you write? Do you create altars all over your house? Do you love to clean? How do you create? I would love to hear if you care to share, of course, because free will is real. So this surrender card, and again, I'm reminded, if you are curious about how these cards were created, you can check out the Altars Up Witches podcast by Kiki and Ilva Droma. You can also find them on Instagram, The Living Altar on Instagram. And you could also tune into the Romanistan podcast, their Halloween episodes where Kiki and Ilva collaborated with Jessica Reedy and Paulina Verminsky of the Romanistan podcast, and they shared spooky stories about how this deck was created, and that was a lot of fun. The Romanistan link, I think, is on my About page. So the Witch's Wheel correspondence with this surrender card is Source, Center, and this is present through the witch's wheel and in all cards. Surrender is huge. I was alluding to that before. So that's the witch's wheel correspondence. And then the spell I shall read four times. And then the guiding messages. There's a couple questions and a setup and a conclusion. So you can nestle in for this next couple chunks. And here we go with the spell. I trust myself to ask for what I need. I trust myself to tend to my relationship to spirit. I trust myself to create a foundation of trust and intimacy with life, strong enough to hold me as I grow. Reading two. I trust myself to ask for what I need. I trust myself to tend to my relationship to spirit. I trust myself to create a foundation of trust and intimacy with life strong enough to hold me as I grow. And reading three, I trust myself to ask for what I need. I trust myself to tend to my relationship to spirit. I trust myself to create a foundation of trust and intimacy with life strong enough to hold me as I grow. And the last reading, I trust myself to ask for what I need. I trust myself to tend to my relationship to spirit. I trust myself to create a foundation of trust and intimacy with life strong enough to hold me as I grow. And that is super sweet, especially on top of that creativity card, right? And this orphans and adoptees rebuilding a new earth, rebuilding earth, closing out the old earth and rebuilding the new earth, creating this foundation of trust and intimacy with life, even though everything they've gone through, they are so hardy to rebuild heaven on earth thank you so much you are so strong and so brave and i am so grateful 
for the work you are doing and for your essence and for your creativity. Now guiding messages. Track your attachments and responses to the situation. Sometimes change is outside of your control. Have you assessed your situ oops, have you assessed your intentions? Are you taking the necessary next steps to move forward? Trust in your efforts. Ooh, that's intense. So that's really asking us to take responsibility, to assess ourselves, to take control and assess ourselves and the things that are outside of our control, let them be. And what are our intentions? I'm recalling Louise Hay. She prompts in one of her sessions, would you rather be right or happy and healthy? <laughs> right? So what are your intentions? Would you rather be right or happy and healthy? Are you taking the necessary steps to move forward? Trust in your efforts. That's so super sweet. And that is all I see for you in this reading tonight about what Venus in Pisces sextiling Uranus at Taurus at 15 degrees has to tell us. And if you enjoyed this reading, you can check out some of the other readings. You can also sign up for an online course to learn how to play your own cards to join a Tuesday night circle to help you play your cards through your loss and traumas, to live the dreamy dreams that you want to live. And also there's a course for parents, Adoptive Parent College. And it's not just exclusive to the adoptive parents. It's for anybody who is interacting with the orphans and adoptees from the personnel at the fire station, to the military personnel, to doctors, lawyers, teachers, community service, advocates, friends, and that is there for you if you wish, if this is resonating with you and you want more. So thank you so much for helping me breathe life into adoption spirit magic. Heartily, we are grateful. Until next time, ciao for now. I love you all.